Hi guys, it's Daniel from the Tech Plague, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install and set up some basic things on Ubuntu Server 15.04. Uh, this is not 14.04 LTS, which is long term support, which means if you're having like problems, you can just Google them. Most of the time, solutions for older versions will work for the new ones as well. As well as that, this one's already got their support. So you want to go ahead and download this. I'll put a link to this in the description. It's only about 500 megs or 600, I think. Yeah, it's 616 megabytes. So it run, runs relatively small. It only requires, I think it's, it's un, definitely under 512 megabytes to, uh, of RAM to run, which is pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to be using VMware Player to actually be running this. So you'll be able to do this. And it's completely free just to emulate uh, operating systems. So when you go into VMware Player, you won't have this uh, GNOME operating system. So you want to click on Create New Virtual Machine, and under Install a Disk Image File, you want to click Browse, and scroll down. Since it's only looking at ISO files, you'll see Ubuntu Server 15.04. Click on that, and it's going to say it detected what it is, which basically means you can use Easy Install, and it will install it for you. So I'm going to type in here what I want. Uh, the username all has to be lowercase and I'm going to put my password as Tor which is root backwards since I remember it you get to choose where it saves it and what you want to call it in this it doesn't really need that much space but I'm not that bothered for its space anyways so something you might want to do is customize the hardware when VMware first creates a machine it uses it 1 gigabyte of RAM and 1 processor this might not be good depending on how much power you actually have to give but it's normally a good idea to up how much it actually gets just to help it out so when you click finish it will actually launch the operating system as it says to direct it input into this machine press ctrl g and then make your mouse disappear apart from when that window comes up and you won't be able to move your mouse at all the way to get it back is to press ctrl and alt and you get your mouse back and you can use your computer again this might take uh, three to five to ten minutes depending on how much power you gave it during the uh, VMware setup and uh, other things so since it's using easy install it's literally going to run through the entire installer for us so I'll be quiet for a minute and fast forward the video Welcome back. So now you can see it's actually finished installing. Uh, you get a prompt saying that VMware is still trying to install its tools. This just helps your computer interact with the operating system, etc. etc. So you're going to want to type in the information that you entered in the user installer earlier. So mine's a tech plague and tour. And then you'll be in. So a lot of things you need require you to run as sudo. Uh, this means super user do. So, the problem with this is typing sudo every time can get tedious. So, for example, if I wanted to do the uh, update command, I can go at get update. And it can't. I don't have permission to lock the directories to run the update. So, if I ran sudo apt get update, that would work. But I'm going to cancel that for now. So, if you type sudo dash s and then type in your login, this makes you run as a root. Uh, a lot of people say there's a lot of there's some security implications to this. 
the prior you're not doing anything that serious, it should be fine. So now I can just run apt get update as I did before. And it will just run. So this is the first command you're gonna to want to run, apt get update. As you can see, it's updating um, packages and the sources and all these other things that are really useful to you, which you're gonna need. Uh, so a lot of times you try and run something and it just won't work. Running sudo apt get update or upgrade would pretty much normally fix it unless there's another problem. So then you can run apt get upgrade. This one will take a bit longer because you can see uh, I've only got 44 megabytes to download so this one won't take as long but by the time you download this and see the video there's probably going to be more updates to get and more packages to install. So as you can see this is going to take a little while to download so once it's finished running through this you can just carry on. I'm going to pause the video until this is finished. And it's finished so welcome back. This is pretty much the basics of what you need to know. Uh, another really useful command is apt get install and provided it's like a really widely known thing and it's known to be safe it will pretty much get it anyway so for example I can get a program called nano which is a text editor oh we've already got it installed uh, I don't know, a task manager so that's called htop and this is a really cool piece of software I love and it's got so if I, so once it's finished installing type in htop and you'll get this and that's all the um, processes that are running running what user they're running under on the top left you can see all eight cores that I've assigned to it through VMware how much RAM rib the two gigs I gave it swap swap usage how long it's been on for and you can kill processes so if I see here it's I've got the process H top I press F9 to kill it I press enter it sends the kill command as you can see at the bottom here it actually, it's actually dead since I killed it through the process it's not going to exit cleanly whereas normally it just goes F10 and it goes back to normal. It had a bit of a glitch because I just killed the process and didn't get a chance to clear itself. So that's useful if you get anything uh, broken. Uh, we've got a search function so you can search if something's running. PS-EF and you need something called a bar I think it's called. Uh, you may find your keyboard settings are wrong so when you go to press a, a key, so for example this is my uh, bracket. There you go. So you might find it puts in the wrong thing. So what you need to do so you can reconfigure your uh, keyboard by typing in dpkg-reconfig reconfigure and then type in keyboard and then when you've typed in enough you can normally press tab and it will type in the rest for you sometimes it won't and if it doesn't that means you typed the same wrong like I have here I put dpacker dpkg it must be run as root so I can just type in sudo dash s or I can just put sudo at the beginning of it. I'll put sudo at the beginning of it for the sake of simplicity. So it wants to know what keyboard you have. Uh, it would be ideal if you could find yours in here. If not, try and find something that you've seen or you could, could use, I guess. So I'm just going to put mine to Microsoft Natural and English UK. Oh yeah, because we've got OGR, uh, you can just choose what you want. And that'll write the new... There you go. So now I can put in that bar, so I can type in uh, sudo-s to run, myself, run everything as root again. Oops. I didn't have to type my password. That's my password there. Uh, and I can type in ps-ef, the bar, grep, which is a searching program, and then I can search for a process. So, for example, I don't know. I don't know anything to be running. So you can see the only process that's running is my search for HTOP, which has been running for zero seconds because it was finished searching zero seconds. Uh, so that's a really useful command. Um, other commands you're going to need to know about is making, deleting directories, um, creating files, deleting files, moving files, renaming files. So to make a directory, you just want to make sure where your R is empty by typing ls and that's listing everything that's in. So you can mkdir and then you can just call it the tech page, which is, now we've got a folder there called the tech page. So cd the and press tab and it'll type it in for you. 
Now if you type in nano, which is a text editor, and then file.txt, you can type in here, press Control X and Y to save it, and ls, you can see you've got file.txt. To rename that file, you want to type in mv, which is the move command, file.txt, and then new name. TXT. And then we type ls, it's now called new name.txt. So I'm going to make another directory in here called dd. So to remove a file, you want to type in rm, which is remove, and you can just type in, so new name.txt, you check, that's gone. However, deleting a folder is not that simple. RMDD, it just tells you it's a directory. So what you want to do is RMDD-R. And that actually forces it to delete it. And as you can see, the directory is now gone. Uh, to copy files, so, oops, nano file. You want to type CP, CP file, and then you can make it copy to, say, file 2. And then you've got file 1 and file 2, and that's just literally copied it. So go nano file 2. It's got exactly the same in it. So these are like the basic commands for Linux. If you have any trouble, you can pretty much just search it up on Google or type it in the comments. I'll do my best to help you. This has been Danny from the Tech Plague. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next video.